hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here, yeah? the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Terry from London, my good pal. How are you doing, Terry? How you doing, mate? You all right? You had a good Christmas? Yeah, yeah, had a good Monday night as well. How about you? How was your Monday night, mate? <laughs> well, drunk as a skunk on here. We had to scrap video, didn't we? I passed out, didn't I? Mate, but don't, you didn't delete the video, did you? No, I've still got it. Yeah, keep that because when you get to Coogan numbers, you gotta put that one out because that. <laughs> Jesus, I'm in a rape mask, one, huh? You could see me as the interview was going on, just getting worse and worse and worse to, <laughs> for wear, couldn't you? It was when you asked me the same question about four times. Yeah, I know. Repeat myself, don't I? But it is what it is. But yeah, I'm having to work, work, work from home again. Uh, my computer's finally packed up up office, so we've ordered a new one. So there'll be no more zooms from up there. I can still go up with my camera and that and do bits and bobs, but I'm at Crawford Ashley's tomorrow, filming there with a, a, a film crew. So we're only, do, only doing that one, once a month with them. You know, like the one we did with Mickey Theo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too expensive. But we've got to try different things, haven't we, to grow the channel and... Uh, yeah, I like Crawford. Like the videos he does, like on his own channel, they're pretty good. Like he, he's he's switched on. Like he doesn't sound it. Like if you, I mean, because he's quite laid back, but he is super switched on in terms of what he talks about. Yeah, he's the spiritual boxer, Craw Crawford Ashley, yeah. the spiritual boxer YouTube. I urge everybody to follow him. It's basically just teaching basic stuff that Crawford's got to be in his bonnet about fighters that are coming through and they, they don't know how to take somebody's jab off them and they don't know how to plant their feet. And he said that there's people getting into position for title shots and the, they're not ready. Does that sound right? Does that sound... Well, that's what he said. You watch it, don't you? Um, yeah, yeah, no, he's spot on. Mm, I know you're big on the technic techniques of boxing and things like that, but he does speak a lot of sense. And I think that... Somebody like Crawford Ashley, who's British Commonwealth European champion, he fought Virgil Early, got robbed, and he? he got he fought Michael Non. Obviously, Michael Non, he admits outclassed him. He said he couldn't figure him out. He said, but he beat him with footwork. Michael Non, he says Michael Non, he beat me with footwork. Every time he, he just went there, with just that other inch, one inch away. Do you know that elite kind of, yeah, working him out kind of thing, but. Uh, yeah, but, but mate, there's no shame in that. I remember he was beating James Tony all ends up until Tony knocked him out. Yeah, and Crawford says to me that uh, he, he he's gutted that he's he's uh, he don't get a chance in boxing, does he really? But he's 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 not all that bothered now. But he, he's been sort of discarded, hasn't he? Like many former champions, but he does help help in community. He works he works at a gym in Leeds. Uh, don't take a bean. And he puts his effort in, effort in in community, so that's good, isn't it? But people need to listen to him because he talks a lot of sense, doesn't he? No, he really does. And, he, he, and I'm going to get him on tomorrow. I'm going to do some filming around there and jazz it up, make it look good. But uh, other than that, it's a uh, home alone job. So, all right then. Well, I think the first fight we're going to have to talk about before we go into the weekend's action is Brooke Khan. Apparently, it's in talks again. It's in the newspaper. Eddie's doing IFL interviews about it, and it's all over news. And I've even picked from people from Sheffield telling me it's in talks. Okay, want... explain this to me though, Russ. Yeah, I thought Eddie wasn't going to work with Kel again after Kel was disloyal in yeah. going to going to do the Crawford fight. Remember when he was on IFL and he was crying like a woman who'd been cheated on? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't going to work with him ever again. But where there's a pound no, there's Eddie here and the man has got no scruples. Eddie, come see me. I don't think the fight... Do you know what? I just... Something tells me that fight just won't happen. Like, I think it's... It's useful for Khan to say, yeah, I'm thinking about the Kell Brook fight. And then, you know, it gets Khan a bit of interest and a bit of engagement. And Khan will end up fighting someone like Broner. That's what I see happening. I see Khan fighting Adrian Broner. Good choice of cushion, by the way. Yeah, Porky's corner. I think you were what Nicola, one of them that Nicola, uh, when she went through a Porky's corner cushion phase, I'd made. <laughs> when I was partners with Nicola before, she left me to work for Dennis Hobson. Good old Dennis. <laughs> He's always there, isn't he? 
<laughs> I didn't see that one coming, did I? <laughs> yeah, mate. Bo- boxing, boxing's renaissance, man. Dennis Hobson, what a legend. Hey, he's on a comeback trail, Dennis, now, isn't he? Oh, uh, you know. He shaved his uh, he's head got... with a razor, you know, and he's got a goatee. He's got what? He shaved his head bald, Dennis, with a razor, and he's got a goatee. He looks totally different. Nice. Has he got himself a Harley Davidson as well? Well, not about Harley Davidson. He can't ride a bike, can he? Can't even drive a car, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's hope let's hope he does come back. But getting back to Kelbrook Khan, Eddie Yearn said, "I don't want to work with Kelbrook again." Blah blah blah. They basically, they shafted Kelbrook, didn't they? But yeah. now and Khan shafted them. Remember when yeah. people laughed when I said this, and I said Eddie Hearn basically gave Khan three fights as hush money, right? Because of that whole Joshua thing, it had to go away somehow. So they gave Amir Khan three fights. Because if you think about it, Russ, go back, right? Amir Khan didn't fight on pay-per-view for Sky, did he? No. Now, I'm well, he has yeah, loads of times, but not recently. Yeah. Not, not, not on that three-fight deal yeah, when he yeah, came yeah, back. Yeah. Now, how much do you think it cost him per fight? Like, I'm sure Khan was on at least pounds. half a million. Half a mil plus, right? He wasn't... that. Birmingham doesn't pay half a mil. Like, there's not half a mil worth of revenue in the Birmingham show. No. So, why would you get Amir Khan on your platform, knowing that he wasn't going to fight Kel, because Maxim knew he wasn't going to fight Kel. So, you get him on for three fights. Why would you pay him that much money unless you need him to stay quiet about something? Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is how I look at it, right? Amir Khan... He's a shot fighter, isn't he? I like him. I've met him a few times. He's, 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 he's shot, isn't he? Kel Brooks shot. So how can the British public invest in this as a pay-per-view? You know what I mean? So, I talk, I, mean, I just don't see it happening. I really don't. I, I see there being more value in Amir Khan versus Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner? Yeah. He's shot to bits, though, as well, isn't he? Yeah, but he's on the comeback trail. And he hasn't got mileage. So if you think about Broner, Broner's never been knocked out. Four-weight world champion. Yeah, but he's never yeah, he's never been knocked out. I mean, he can always say that he never took it seriously before. He's got a story and he's still young enough that he can come back. Mate, I'm hearing Victor Ortiz is coming back as well. So I can see Khan Victor Ortiz. But you know, Victor Ortiz, at one point in his career, he'd knocked everybody down, hadn't he? Yeah. He were icing people for fun, wasn't he? Yeah, so I can see I can see Khan fighting Ortiz. I can see Khan fighting Broner. I can't see Khan fighting Brook. I think the the dislike between them's too deep now. Yeah, but why would Eddie Earn be doing interviews about it and, and putting it in the Sun newspaper and stuff like that? Because it means Eddie Hearn's in the paper, Porky. Yeah, do you think that's what it is? Remember, you and I talked about this before. Hearn's aim in life is to be British boxing. So yeah. he owns the story. Whatever the story is that week, he gets in front of it. So, let Porky, give you an example, right? Let's say you and I agree to fight, mm. right? And we, we, we do it at the Donny Dome or we do it at the, I don't know, we do it at Bramall Lane, right? Mm. If it looks like that's going to sell out Bramall Lane, Hearn will be involved and all Hearn will say is something like, look, I'm in talks with both guys now to try and get this on Sky. Yeah. But he'll just insert himself into the story, even if he's not spoken to us. And because he's got all the platforms, all the YouTubers. Yeah. And all the media, he, like Gareth A. Davis, hanging out of the back of him. Yeah, that's what he does. He's clever with it. People don't see the game, but that's what Hearn does. He gets in front of every story so that whenever a story comes out, there's always an Eddie Hearn quote. You know, like that Canelo story at weekend, he, he, he inserted something in there, didn't he? He said, yeah, I've just spoke to him. Yeah, Canelo, I've just spoke to... Eddie, I've just spoke to Canelo Hearn. <laughs> but but that's what he does, right? So from, from my understanding, Hearn will email someone and go, look, we're interested in this fight. And then that, for him, counts as talks have started. Like, yeah. He wouldn't have got on the phone or anything. He just yeah, talks have started. It's like that time where he said, uh, te- this is Terry Harper, she's going to be a world champion. Canelo told me yesterday that she's his favourite female fighter. What? <laughs> Hey, they jump out in his mouth, don't they? The whoppers, aren't they? Yeah. And then no one ever questions him and goes, well, how does Canelo know Terry Harper? I don't know. 
I know. But so you don't think Brooke Khan happens then? Uh, no. There I now? think the, the dislike between them is too deep. And what about the fact that Kel Brooks, his face is held together with Papa Mache, isn't it? His face is held together in it. His face. It's just as soon as he gets tapped, he's not interested, is he? Yeah, man. I think just subconsciously that I think that fear of going blind. I think that might be just too deep in him now. Yeah. Well, it's uh, if they put that fight on, though. What would you say if Sky put that on? Would they be really dragging the dregs? Nah, they've they've done KSI Logan Paul. <laughs> they just not bothered. Yeah. They just front it out. Yeah, don't yeah. It's, it's, we're past that point, Russ. We we're past the point of quality, right? In quality fights. It's about what sells, not necessarily what's good. Mm, do you think that's the problem at the moment? Yeah, I think everyone's just chasing revenue, and I can't be mad at people trying to make money, Russ. Yeah. I think as fans, we need to just say, if you want to make money off us, you got to do better. But we don't. We just accept it. And you know why that is, Russ? Wow. Because no one wants to feel left out in boxing. Boxing's a sport populated by pretty insecure people. And there's this real fear that if you're not involved in a fight, somehow you're missing out on something. And the truth is you're not. I just, just don't watch it. If you don't think it's good value, don't watch it. And don't, don't watch it so you can just tweet about it. You know, no one really cares about what you say on Twitter. No one cares about what I say on Twitter. Just... Just don't watch it if it's garbage. Simple as that. If you think it's a good fight, uh, there'll be people in your comments, I'm sure, who'll say, I still watch Khan Brook because I think it's a good fight. Then watch it. By all means, watch it. But don't watch it after having complained about it. That's what I don't agree with. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. Uh, moving on, then. Luke Campbell against Ryan Garcia. What do you think to the fight? And what did you think about... Uh, them doing the selfies in the ring at the end, you know, Shane and Canelo and that. Do you think that were in bad taste? Or I mean, could you have seen Joe Gallagher doing selfies after he lost with Beefy and Callum with Canelo in ring? I'm sure he did. No disrespect, Joe, but I'm sure I'm sure there were pictures after Liam Smith won of him with Canelo. I get that. Sometimes you just want to capture moments for your grandkids and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. My concern is probably wider than that, Russ. If you go back to the big, to before the fight even started, you had guys like Ryan Rhodes talking about Luke Campbell just needs to be cute on the back foot and be nicking rounds. And I thought to myself, this is the problem with British boxing. Why can't Luke Campbell, being the older man, why can't he go in and just go and slap Ryan Garcia about? That's exactly what he should have done. He should have gone in there as a 33-year-old man and gone, listen here, little kid. Bang, 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 bang. How do they feel? And then if he loses after that, fair enough, the better man won. But Campbell boxed. He boxed timid. He boxed within himself. And I know people say he dropped him. But that's more Ryan Garcia not respecting Campbell and just taking risks he shouldn't have been taking. Yeah. And after that, if you notice, after that, Garcia just looked in control of the fight. Once he got dropped, he just looked in control. And it's a shame because Campbell's better than that performance. So you got to then look at the, the tactics and go, what was, what was the game plan? What was being said in the corner and all this sort of stuff? Because had that been Anthony Yard on that stage there, people would have said, mate, you need to leave Tunde. They'd have said, you need to leave Tunde and go to Shane. So after Campbell gets put down with a body shot by the way a body shot not even just a body a, a leaping body shot the guy didn't even try and set it up he just jumped in and swung it and no one no, no one on twitter is saying luke campbell needs a new trainer why aren't they saying luke campbell needs a new trainer this is with shane mcguigan isn't they wow you see this is what happens so every time this is, look social media something goes wrong go to shane go to adam right that's what they say all the time go to shane go to adam Dave Caldwell. Uh, he's, he's a distant third on that one. No one ever says go to Pat Barrett. No one ever says go to Joe Gallagher. Pat Barrett's no my says, trainer at year. Yeah. You know, no one ever says that. No one ever says go to Glenn Rhodes, and they should. Because most boxing fans don't know who the good trainers are. They don't know who the knowledgeable trainers are. And you can even put Joe Gallagher in that. Now, I don't like Joe Gallagher's style. I don't like how his guys box. But he's been in the pro game, what, since he was 19? 42, 42 a year he's been in boxing, Joe. 
Yeah, yeah. he was doing pro yeah. corners from like 1920. He yeah, knows yeah, yeah. the sport. So I think my point on all of this is I want people to have the same energy for Luke Campbell that they had for Anthony Yard. I want them to have the same energy for Shane that they had for Tunde. I want to see that on social media because you can't just be on this thing of, well, I'm going to slag Tunde off because I think he's arrogant. No, he's either a good trainer or he's not. And if he's not a good trainer, cool. But let's call out all the other people who aren't delivering at world level or I mean, that level as well. Because I thought Yard had a better go against Kovalev than Luke Campbell did against Garcia, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Do you feel that Tunde being a manager and a trainer it has a conflict of interest in him having to be out there all the time, whereas somebody like McCracken, who was just a trainer, you don't see him putting himself out on social media all the time, do you? Uh, I don't think McCracken likes the criticism, if I'm being honest with you. McCracken should be more visible because he's the performance director of GB. So McCracken never came out and talked about the Muhammad Ali failed drugs test. He never came out and said, we tested all the other athletes in camp and it turns out they're all negative. So we're happy. This was just a one-off. They never did that. McCracken doesn't talk about the sexual harassment of the female boxers by the male boxers. Rob McCracken doesn't come out and talk about the, the weed use amongst those British boxers in training camp. Rob McCracken doesn't talk about how aggressively they force women to cut weight. So they're making 57 kilo women try and box at 51. Rob McCracken doesn't talk about how some women almost ended up with eating disorders at Team GB. McCracken doesn't come out and talk about a lot of things that are messed up in Team GB. That's why he's not visible, because there are a lot of uncomfortable questions coming his way. The, do you feel that McCracken's been a failure while he's been up there, or he's been a success? Ah, uh, okay. So let's look at. 2012. Who were the successes in 2012? Joshua. Luke I'm going to give that to McCracken. That's on McCracken's watch. Luke Campbell. Now, nah, Luke Campbell's a Terry Edwards product, as far as I'm concerned. Edwards had him marked down for. He, I think he. What do you say about Campbell? 2008 came one year too early for Campbell. That's why he. He. I mean, had it been 2009, Campbell would have done the Olympics. Campbell then. cleaned up, didn't he? From 2009 up to 2012, was an amateur across the board, didn't he? Yeah. So, so Campbell for me is a Terry Edwards product. Yeah, a lot of those guys are Terry Edwards products, as opposed to McCracken. McCracken just kind of came and took over what was already there, and then just kind of added Joshua, but not much else, man. Look, he let Liam Cameron go. I mean, Josh Taylor didn't get the love he deserved because That's McCracken, true. and this was the, this was the difference. Two thousand eight, Terry Edwards loved talented boxers. That's why that squad is still probably the best we've assembled in terms of all-round talent. And did actually, did you Billy Joe, Frankie Gavin, one David Price, Joe Murray, all them lot? Yeah. No, look at Porky. Yeah, oh, look how much I know. Hey, hey, Porky. <laughs> no, so all of those, all all those guys, um, even Stephen Simmons to an extent, because he could box. Stephen Simmons, uh, Baster was knocking around then. Even then, they're all guys who could they could box in a way that was pleasing on the eye. But the problem was, it was an unruly bunch. So they said, right, we need a disciplinarian to come in, someone who's not going to tolerate all of this. So they get McCracken in, right? And then McCracken basically started just getting people who are more like him, people that love to get up and go running, that love to do one-twos in a really upright way. So there was no, no flair in British boxing. And they, they treated boxing like they did cycling, if you remember. They just found the the marginal gains so let's spend more money here 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 and we'll get our gold medals in 2012 although i think as we know with aiba now i think some of the judges were nobbled anyway oh my god the i only had joshua beating the chinaman at the olympics i thought he lost the other three yeah and then then 2016 let's look at 16 joshua boatsy yeah he did oh. well he he outperformed okoli out of nowhere like Super Came from nowhere, didn't he, Akoli? Yeah, remember, he's not even an ABA champion. Yeah, so now, I don't think I don't think Lawrence Akoli has ever won an amateur title. Yeah, and he was a successful Olympian, and now probably about to be a world champion. So fair play to him. But look, 
apart from Boatsy and Okoli, the rest of them, you're a bit like, yeah, whatever. So what's McCracken really done that Terry Edwards couldn't do? I don't know. I don't think he's been better than Terry Edwards. And I think British boxing has suffered as a result because a lot of really talented kids that should have been in Sheffield never got that opportunity. I'd like to have seen Ted Cheeseman have a proper run in Sheffield. But fair play, he was up against one of them, one or both of the McCormacks. So that's kind of hard. But that's that's probably it though. Like McCracken's legacy at GB will be Joshua, it will be Boatsy, and probably Pat McCormack. And that's that's really it. Mm. All right. So Luke Campbell then, what next for him? Does he ever win a world title? No. You know, no. Campbell's the only belt he's got at home is a Commonwealth. He's not won a British yet or a European. No, nah, he won't win anything now. He, that that was his time. His his time. He had the momentum at that point there, but now Luke Campbell will just sell his name to someone or other. So I think that's where you'll see Luke Campbell. Just that name is for sale. Don't you beat any of them four champions at one thirty-five? <laughs> there's only two champions. In fact, there's only one. There's only, you There's know, only the, main guy, the main guys. He's fought two of the main five, Annie Lomachenko and Garcia. There's Tank, Aini, and there's the other kid in the Lopez. Does he beat them? No, he doesn't beat any of them. He gets stopped. He gets stopped. Does he? Yeah. That's, yeah it's, Who's if I'm Campbell then? now. Who's to hmm? blame then? Who's to blame then? Uh, I don't think it's to blame. Maybe Luke Campbell's reached his peak. Maybe this is as good as Luke Campbell could ever be. He's made a lot of money. Fit and he deserves it. Look, he's a let's get it right. He's a national hero. He brought home an Olympic gold medal, yeah. a gold medal we've never questioned. Yeah, it's not like you know, like Joshua's where people make arguments that he didn't deserve it. Yeah, no one's ever questioned Campbell's gold because like Campbell did it the right way. Yeah, he, he, he beat everybody comfortably, didn't he? Yeah, so respect to him, and he is a national treasure and a national hero for that. But I think at the top level of boxing, he's done what he's there to do. I'm sure if Ricky Burns needs a payday, they can make that fight happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, they'll dig someone like that out. They'll dig someone with a name out for him so he can sign out and make a fair few quid and scout the game. Do you feel that he might go for James Tennyson or Campbell? It would be a shame if they treated Campbell as a stepping stone, actually. I'd, I'd, it'd be a lack of respect. And if I was Luke, I wouldn't take the fight. What about, uh, do you feel that Luke Campbell will go down as like another Audley Harrison, a gold medalist who didn't achieve uh, what he should have done? No, because Luke was never out of his depth. Audley was. At the top level, Audley was out of his depth. Whereas I think Luke was a guy who just wasn't there. Like He was, he was, he was better than a gatekeeper but he wasn't quite consistent world level. He's a guy who deserved a world title shot without necessarily being world level to the point where he should be there all the time. A bit like a bomber Graham. Yeah. Um, but I think Bomber was more of a threat. I'm trying to think of a good example of what he'd be like. Oh, man, it's tricky. Michael, uh, not Michael Watson, James Kirkland. Yeah. That would work for me. A James Kirkland, somebody who should have won a world title, but uh, or like a Jimmy White at Snooker, it just wasn't meant to be. You know, that yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair description of Campbell. Yeah, yeah. just what meant to be, although you were good enough. Yeah, all right then. Uh, Yard Tunde, there's been a lot of videos. Spencer Fearon's done a lot of interviews regarding this. Obviously, he's Tunde's mate. Tunde's done a lot of interviews. Then we've got uh, a lot of people on social media. They, they were calling for Tunde's head, weren't they? Uh, do you think it's in bad taste or do they need to go the separate ways, him and Yard? Um, look, boxing fans often have no idea what it takes to be a trainer, which is fair enough. It's a secretive thing because you don't get to see trainers working day in, day out. It's not sexy and it's not glamorous. But the most important thing you can ever have as a trainer is the heart of your fighter. That's it. Yeah. 
all of this stuff about go to this trainer, go to that trainer. If I can't give you my soul, it will never work. Yard and Tunde have been together nearly a decade now. Like Tunde's watched him become a man. He's seen him cope with his biggest challenges. He's seen him go through his biggest successes. No other trainer will ever have that emotional investment in Anthony Yard. So why would you move? You know, so I would imagine what's going to happen, Porky, if I'm being honest. They'll come up with a statement and they'll say, Tunde's going to share training duties with Tony Sesse and maybe one other guy, but they're going to keep it in-house. It's going to be in that circle. They're not going to add anyone new. And then they're just going to try and get better quality sparring and they're going to try and get Yard out and about in terms of being able to spar some of the better guys. I don't think they'll do much more. They'll just kind of tweak those little elements and they'll carry on going as normal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I saw Yard do an interview. Did you see Yard's interview that he did with some guy in a suit? I saw bits of it, but yeah, you know. Uh, I saw that. And Do you feel that Anthony Yard might do a Joshua and bring somebody in, but still, he still stayed with McCracken, but he brought somebody in to add to it. Yeah, like I just said earlier, they'll bring in Tony Sesse. They'll bring in someone they already know. Mm. What to, That's all what, you need to do. How will Tunde react to that? Uh, well, someone he already knows. I don't think he's got an issue with that, actually. I think it, I think it might make Tunde's life easier in terms of not having to do so much of the heavy lifting. So it may, it may work out being best for everyone, but We'll see. Listen, so it's it's never as simple as, you know, someone's done someone wrong here. You know, there, I'm sure there are trainers who would find the way that yard works to be incompatible with who they are as trainers and vice versa. So, you know, don't the grass isn't always green on the other side is all I'd say. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, Daniel Dubois. What next for him? Um, he's got to heal up first, physically, emotionally. He's got to heal up. Um, one of the messages that I sent to, to his old man was simple as, I think he just needs a year or so of just being a kid. Just let him go out there and enjoy life a bit. You know, just knock about, be with some mates, grow mature, find out who he is. He probably needs that while his eye heals up. You know, let him go and just experience different things, even if it's in a boxing context. I think he's he's been in this really focused lane for so long now. Sometimes you just get tired of it and all you want to do is just do something different. So I'd like to see him just have a year where he chills. Now I'm hearing rumours he'll be back at the tail end of 2021. And if he is, just have him, have him rebuild. You know, so find someone, maybe like a Nathan Gorman rematch, just to gauge where he's at and then push on from there. They did it with Frank Bruno, didn't they? They brought him back, didn't they? They kept bringing him back and rebuilding. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so, Daniel Dubois. Uh, Tyson Fury, is he parked up and is the trouble ahead? So I think this is an almighty mess. So everything you and I have ever talked about, Russell, as I've always said to you, the Joshua fight doesn't happen until 2022. I've yeah. said that to you numerous times. You're saying that's 2018, aren't we? Yeah, and they've had that date locked in. I believe Barry Hearn, who's the real decision maker at Matchroom, I believe Barry's made that call, and I believe Bob Arum's okay with that. And all they've done really is they've said, look, we're going to have this fight in 2022, and they've just worked backwards to go, which opponents can we fill the time in with? That's what they've done. Yeah. Now, what complicates it is Wilder wants wants his third fight. And if I'm being honest with you, I don't even think Wilder wants the fight. I think the people behind Wilder are the ones who are pushing for the third fight. If I'm being honest, and I think it might be a cash out. I think they're realizing Deontay might just be bored of boxing. So they're like, look, let's just get our money out before, you know, this implodes spectacularly. Mm. But I'd rather they just rebuilt Wilder and said, look, let him go on a three fight run where he's just icing people and then let's come back and get Fury. Or let's come back and get Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, two seconds. Well, scoped. You want me adding, dog? Uh, 
Mate, you, you see, you forgot on Monday when Reggie attacked you. <laughs> Do you remember that when when I think I think Reggie was inhaling too much of the smoke? <laughs> oh, man, he wasn't even here. <laughs> no, he was. But mate, mate, honestly, go and watch that video back. Right, Re- 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 Reggie digs his claws into your back, <laughs> and you jumped up, and then and then you're trying to. I think you're trying to explain to him what you had done wrong, and he started growling at you. Rocky, you mean? Oh, Rocky, sorry. My dog's called Rocky. <laughs> Not Red, Jimmy. Kids come up. My life's called Red. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky, man. Rocky was going yeah, mad. He actually, he did, yeah. He did. He, he showed me his teeth, didn't he? <laughs> I think he had a whitey. <laughs> uh, so, Tyson Fury parked up. So, you were saying? Yeah. But it's messy so- now. I mean, Frank Warren... Said on November the 28th, we're going to announce the Fury fight. It looked like Caballero, didn't it? Well, everybody knew it were. On the Monday, on the Tuesday, he came out and they, they said it, uh, it was it were not going to happen. Now, it's not usually like Frank to back down, is it? So, what I've, what I've heard coming out of the States is Wilder wants what's fair. Mm. Either give him the fight or make sure he's a part of whatever happens afterwards. So he's saying, look, if Fury and Joshua are going to fight this year, cool. Let me fight the winner. After they've done their two fights, let me fight the winner. Let's agree that now. I will fight the winner, and then I can keep myself busy. Or he's saying, pay me the money, and then you guys can go ahead and do your business. But I'm involved in this. I think the message is coming back, I'm involved in Fury Joshua. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not like Frank to be playing second fiddle, though, is it, in a big fight like that, is it? But it is, because Frank hasn't... Frank can't pull together the money you need to make that fight happen. Yeah. Will it happen in England, Joshua Fury, when it does happen? Mm, No. I don't see it happening in England, and I'll, I'll explain my logic. The the pot for Joshua Klitschko in total was about, I think it was about 35 mil all in. Yeah. And of that, Sky got about 12, 12 to 15 Sky got of that. And then the rest kind of went to all the various parties like Wembley and so forth. So if that's the biggest pot that, can, that you can generate in the UK for a fight for like Joshua Klitschko, I don't think you do much more for Fury because Wembley has a limited capacity. But you take that fight to Vegas, mm. you could probably do 50 million just on the gate. Yeah. And then you got the pay-per-view. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's a bigger fight in the states and if any of the Middle Eastern countries want to stump up the cash, it's a bigger fight there. Mm. All right then. Uh Eddie Earn and Canelo. What's going on there, mate? Honestly, nothing. Taking him, I, to I don't. China, s- taking him to China, I, he says. Taking him to, Eddie's not doing anything with Canelo. Like, let's let's be absolutely clear about how this works, right? Canelo decides what the hell he's going to do next. Yeah. Eddie does as he is told. Hmm. He always comes out with this stuff like he needs promoting correctly to be a global star and a brand, a global brand. He always comes out with that kind of waffle, doesn't he? Yeah, he doesn't. Canelo just needs to speak English, and then he'll yeah. he'll he'll be he'll be a multi-millionaire many 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 times over. He's already worth four hundred million dollars, isn't he, Canelo? Already, so he's he's going to be a billionaire, isn't he? Like, I don't know if uh, the other Mexican guy, Chavez, is it? He would rich. Yeah. he'll be in on that level for stardom, but I think he'll be a lot richer than him, won't he? Yeah, Canelo, Canelo makes good money. Look, that contract with DAZN was what, 370 mil? Yeah. So he'll get somewhere close to that by the time he's had his run of eight or nine fights. So fair play to him. Um, I just think, honestly, Eddie Hearn is a service provider to Canelo. He's literally just there as a mouthpiece. He does not determine who Canelo fights at all. He has zero input into that. I will save people the suspense and don't even write back in the comments. I promise to God, Hearn cannot tell Canelo who to fight. Nobody can. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. 
We spoke about. Have we spoke about React Pro knocking back a Coley? No, 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 we haven't. React Pro's knocked back a fight with Lawrence Acoli for the world title, and Dylan White apparently is raging about it. I would be too. And he's saying that you've got to grab your chance when it comes. But Dylan knocked back a fight with Joshua Tinney at Wembley for a world title. So. But Dylan's calling out Parker and Oprah rematch and Ortez, and he says he's going to knock Wilder out. He says they all want him now. Uh, mm, I don't think that's true either. Like on Dillian, Sky Sports, on Sky Sports, on January fourth interview with Andy Scott. Okay, but just do the numbers. Uh, Ortiz can probably make between two and four million a fight in America. Heyman looks after him. He's not making that here. Yeah, fighting Dillian. He's just not. So, why does he need Dillian? Ortiz got under thousand dollars, didn't he, to fight in Monaco on his matchroom debut? Yeah. yeah, that's why he left because Heyman was like, "How much are you making over there?" He told him, and Heyman was like, "No, oh, no, nah, nah, nah. You come over here, man. We'll make we'll make you some real money." Yeah, and plus he's a danger man, isn't he? Two time Olympian, Cuban, Southpaw. <laughs> Experience has got a can punch. Nah, he's an old man now and he's been iced twice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so so was well, Dylan. Yeah, so yeah, the battle of battle of the bruisers. If they, if they want to get at it, fair enough, then let them do it. But it's for me, that's not a big fight. Mm. I'm almost worried that Dillian's missed the boat for being one of the main players at heavyweight. Oh, he's ma- missed it massively, hasn't he? Now. Yeah, I think he's missed that boat. And I like Dillian. I'm a, I'm a Dillian fan. But the time he should have taken that fight in 2019, he's going to live to regret that. That was his time to to cement himself as a world-level player. Mm. Yeah, and it's a shame, isn't it? And he, obviously, he, he manages React Pro, doesn't he? And obviously... So, the thing with Richie and Lawrence is they're about the same size. Like, Richard Riakpo is a big man. So, style-wise, does it match? I think it's too soon for Richie. I genuinely do. But if it's for a world title, my friend, you got to do it. Like, that's, that's, that's what the unwritten rules of boxing dictate. When that chance comes, you take it. And then we can find out if you're able to rise to the occasion because you got to perform like you never performed before. That's what he has to do. And if Lawrence, like, yeah, I mean Lawrence has all the pressure on him in that fight. Like Richard Riakpo has nothing to lose. I would have advised him to take the fight. I'd say, mate, take the fight, take the money. Yeah. All right then. Uh, Eddie Hearn and Canelo. Oh, we just spoke about that. We have, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, let me just cross that out. Uh, Joe Gallagher's not in Helmets of the Year. Didn't get one vote in December, the only month of the year, last year, that he never had a vote all the way through in Helmets. Has Joe Gallagher crossed over to the dark side now? <laughs> well, Russ, so we did, a, we did an episode and I talked about um, the matchroom middle management problem. Yeah. And basically the problem is, there are people in that matchroom sta- in that matchroom stable who are too expensive to put on without crowds. Callum Johnson, Liam Smith, uh, Josh Warrington's another example for me. Kel Brook would be another example. Dave Allen was another example. Uh, because David but... had a taste of some good money against Price. Uh, yeah. Brown. Yeah, but you can't be paying guys 80 to 100K when there's no fans unless they're a pay-per-view attraction. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And so Gallagher's got a lot of those people in his stable who are who are guys that you, on a Liverpool show, you can kind of put them on because the crowd will pay for them. But on that Sky budget of, what is it, 250K per show? No, nah, you can't put those guys on. So... What Joe needs to do is Joe needs to get some prospects, some young kids. Like he had Marcus Morrison. So I'd be pushing Marcus Morrison for a fight. Get Marcus Morrison in with, I don't know, Phoenix Cash. Yeah, you're right there about that 250K because it's 150 from Sky. There's 100 grand from sponsorship. 
but there's no gate as well as to put into pot, you know, to pay everybody. Mm. So there's no profit for her. And so he, he's got to tell everybody they've got to take less money because he's got to take less money, hasn't he? Yeah, so, and Gallagher's got a stable of guys who are in that kind of range where they're just that, li- they're not quite pay-per-view, but they're a little too expensive to have on regular TV. Yeah. Do you feel that we could see some retirements this year? Hmm. Like who? Beefy Smith, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson. He's 36 next, Callum Johnson. And he's unfulfilled his potential after showing world-class punching power against Baturbi, hasn't he? Beat a beaver, or better be whatever you want to call him. Mm, I think that knockdown was like the Garcia knockdown, where Baturbi just didn't respect him and was just playing with him and then got caught. And then once he switched on, it was game over. Yeah. I think Callum's problem is he's just never fought enough. You so know, in Callum's head, he's probably like, I'm three or four fights away from being able to retire. And so he's waiting for those fights. Maybe well, a, a Joshua Bartzi fight, a Spider Richards fight for the UK. And then one in America with like a Bivol or someone. And then one more and he's done. He fought my uh, school friend, uh, John Anthony. Callum Johnson and uh, John couldn't keep him off. He was a very big puncher. I think he got disqualified and John for holding, but he said he'll go all way. And Froch said to me, Callum Johnson goes all way. But I just feel that I don't think the kid's getting the chances, is he, really? Mm-hmm. No one ever does with Hearn, if you remember. So you fight really mediocre opponents for us for ages, and then you get thrust into a world title shot. That's how Hearn does it. That's how he saves money. You feel that Joe Gallagher uh, were right to speak out on what had gone on? Because they kind of like sent him to Coventry, didn't they, if you know what I mean? You know, my thing is, if you want to talk, talk properly, right? And I don't know if Joe's really come out and said what needs to be said. I'd like to hear more. Mm. Because I think he knows more than he's letting on at the moment. Mm. But he's got that challenge of, how do you get your guys on shows when it's too expensive to do it without crowds? The only one he can legitimately put out there is probably Natasha Jonas. And I'd like to see her out again because I'm a massive Jonas fan. Yeah, she speaks really good, doesn't she, Natasha Jonas, on TV, doesn't she? I think she's one of the best pundits out there in, in, across the board. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think she's, I thought she was very good, very bright. She's obviously a nice looking girl with manners and that. And, I'd like to see more of her on uh, on TV commentary yeah. upon it. I think so. I think she's better than Matthew. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't imagine Savannah doing that because it's not up her street. And the, even though they're close mates, the chalk and cheese as regards that. But I think that uh, she, she's a good pundit. I'd like to see a fight Terry Harper, but they've gone in a different direction, aren't they, Steffi and Eddie now? Yeah. Yo, well, listen, they thought, they thought Jonas would be a rollover job. And it turned out Natasha came to fight. Yeah. And they don't want to put Terry Harper in with people who come to fight. It's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so we spoke about Joe G's stable. Joe's not in helmets at month this year. He didn't, he didn't get a vote for December and added up all freight through a year. He, uh, he, weren't, he weren't in, in, in top 25. And I've only done a top 10. So Joe's usually... Uh, Charging up the rankings, in it for helmet helmet videos. So maybe Joe not getting the votes from the hardcores. Maybe his popularity is going to go through the roof now, Terry. We'll Callum, see. Callum Smith. What next for Callum Smith, Terry? What do you see? Rider rematch. Right, I'd like to see the rider rematch and see it put to bed. But if he moves up to one seven five, that fight goes, doesn't it? That what because John. Mm. Really, a small super middle, isn't it? So, 175, they'll put him in with like a Hosea Burton. I can see that happening, or someone like that. The little but test Hosea Burton's from the same stable as Callum, isn't he? Oh, yeah, you can't do that. Uh, so that get, so it gets tricky because if you look at if you look at Callum Smith at 175 and Joshua Boatsy at 175 and Craig Richards at 175. There isn't enough money for all three of them, so they're going to have to back one and push them all the way to the top. 
people. So who do you choose? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Would you would you put Callum in with Craig Richards? Mm-hmm. I think Craig wins. You think Craig Whit Richards beats Callum Smith? I don't agree. Yeah, I think Craig does. Jesus, yeah. Does he? Yeah. No, you're only saying that because because he's your pal. I think Callum Smith beats <laughs> Craig Richards. He's got a better so, season. What I'll say, Russ, is I've trained Craig before. And he looks deceptive. The thing about Craig is he's, he looks really deceptive because he doesn't look like He-Man. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't look like Superman. He looks a bit narrow. You almost say that his head's too wide for his body. There are all these things about Craig you look at and you go, it doesn't make sense. Is that him with Dave Caldwell now, yeah? Who? Craig Richards. That's Lerone Richards. Oh, Lerone Richards with Dave, is he? As you said to me on Monday, Porks, I, ha- I have to relegate you from super hardcore now. To yeah, just is, hardcore. is he the one with the dreads or the flat top? Because there's two Richards, isn't there? One's with the dreads who knocks about we yard. Spider. That's Craig. That's Craig, is it? Yeah. Who trains him? Uh, Peter Sims. Peter Sims, that's it. And Lerone Richards, as with Coldwell, isn't he? Yeah. They're, not yeah. Brothers, they're not brothers, though, are they? No, not at all. No, no. Right. So, mate, so, yeah, we're relegating you from super hardcore, Russ. Sorry. I'm super casual now. For the... Yeah, you gotta take you gotta take the hat off now. Sorry, you can't wear Lacoste anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to put uh, eye tech on, have I? <laughs> got high there tech you on. go. There you go. Peaky blinders. Porky blinders. Yeah. Off a Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but no, uh, no, so honestly, Craig, do, do, do Craig don't beat him, Callum J- Smith, then yeah, at 175, yeah. And and here's why, Russ, when you see Craig Richards's forearm, it's like 90% bone, like he's got these, re- he's got he's got these almost freakish joints, like all his joints are big. So when he punches, it's not the fastest and it's not the snappiest, but it's heavy, yeah. He's just heavy. He's naturally heavy-handed. He's I mean, naturally you're strong. Me with these stories about Craig Spider Richards, I'm freaking out. Nah, you know you're all right. Barricade in. I need to barricade in this bedroom and ring Robin Reed up and get him to come and protect me from these Craig Richards scary stories. You're talking about him <laughs> like he's some bad man, road man, gangster. No, no, I'm no. All I'm saying is. As as someone designed to throw punches, he has everything in his favour. Like but General it doesn't. Well, isn't he? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's uh, it's one of these things I, I try to explain to fans. They look different from the outside looking in, but when you work with them, it's like when I worked with Denzel Bentley. I didn't understand how hard he punched until he dislocated my wrist when we we're doing pads. Then I was like, oh, okay. Whew. All right then. Uh... Shannon Courtney's tweets from 2013 April, is it? Something like that. She came out and put a statement out, but didn't really say anything in the statement, did she? She just they never said, do. It was a matchroom worded thing, wasn't it? But yeah. did, did you see some of the tweets? Yeah, I did. But they don't surprise me. That's the standard thing a girl with blonde hair from Watford would say. So I'm like, well, whatever. Yeah. Oh, the only way you're going to make it right in a boxing sense is let her jump in with Ellie Scottney. Let's just get that done early this year and let's all move on. What about Shannon Courtney against Rachel Ball? Who wins the rematch? Man, I don't even know. Neither's any good. So I'm like, whatever. Yeah, do you feel that now, if you can hang out at the back of Coogan Cassius, if you're a woman... Get you sent on IFL and get you sent out there. That's how you get the riches and the spoils in boxing, even if you can only fight a little bit. Well, I'm hoping Coogan Cassius isn't running a casting couch, you know? Yeah. That's what I, I'm, I'm hoping his opposed to female boxing is not to run a casting couch mm. because, you know, well, that's what the word he's, he's a dad and all that. He's a family man now. So I'm hoping that it's all he, I'm hoping he's broadcasting women based on their talent and their, their work ethic as opposed to anything else. Because I'm not seeing Ellie Scottney get the same level of attention. And Ellie Scottney is ex-Team GB. She's fought for this country. 
she's shown herself to be tough numerous times, and I'm not seeing her on IFL. And I'm not wondering why. She's on IFL, do we? She's a world champion. <laughs> but no, 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 no. I think it's different. Like, I've offered Savannah Marshall the chance to do stuff with me, and she dragged she dragged her feet on it. Then I was like, nah, I'll move on. Um, with L, L will do whatever, whenever. Do you know what I mean? So I think, I think Savannah Marshall is just more of a, if I don't have to do it, I won't do it. Ellie's like, I'd really like to do it, but no one's knocking on her door. What do you think about Savannah Marshall? Uh, sorry, not Savannah Marshall, Shannon Courtney. Every interview she seems to be doing, I just saw one yesterday with Michelle Joy Phelps. Every interview now, it's about mental health, about her mental health. Is this, but if she'd have got the decision against Rachel Ball, would she have been mentioning that she's battled mental health? Or is this just like so, a moment? Okay, so so by way of context, around this part of the world, Russ, we all know Shannon Courtney. And what we all know about Shannon Courtney is if you show up to fight, if you really show up to, to impose yourself on her, it takes a couple of rounds, but eventually, like, she just starts to fall apart mentally. Happened in the amateur career a lot. Like, no one trains harder than Shannon. No one grafts harder than Shannon. But she was losing to people she should have beaten just because they showed up to fight. And they refused losing to give up. Losing answers and kicked off one night when she didn't get a decision, somebody told me. Yeah, there's a few of them. And she was going mad there with some big kickoff up behind backstage or something. And... Well, well, it can't be a kickoff. It's just amateur boxing, right? Yeah, you, you know, you kick know off a few off complaints and all that, but that happens all the time. I've seen it on Mick Whale shows when I've been at amateur shows. Nah, look, there's not, none of them were robberies. That's what I'll say to you. She's never been robbed. And, you know, you couldn't... I'll put it this way. Today, right now, I would fly Dervla Duffy over from Ireland to box Shannon Courtney, and Dervla Duffy would stand her on her head. So Shannon's Easily. going to be carefully matched, do you think, by Adam Booth? Yeah, look, he's got Shannon Courtney and Ellie Scottney. I'm confident those two don't even spar. That's the difference in class between them. I don't even think he'd have them sparring each other. Yeah, but we have to give Shannon Courtney credit because she's she won a big fat dumpling and she's took loads of weight off and she's got stuck in and she's got us sent out there and she's come out of the comfort zone. So she has turned it around her life, hasn't she, I suppose? Russell, this is professional boxing. It's a job. Like when she did that in the amateurs, we applauded because fair enough. This is pro boxing. We want, we want a product. We want you to deliver. We want entertainment. That's what we're paying for. And is she deliver so, as regards talent? Well, she's got to test herself. Like all these Rachel Balls. I'm sure they're going to put her in with Beck Connolly next. All those sorts of fights are meaningless to us as fans. We want to see her fight Ellie Scottney. Yeah. They're about the same age. Let them get at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, what fights do you want to see next year, Terry? Um, Russell Hartley v. John Fury, top of my list. Oh, God. I want to see me and John Fury. We'll have to, we'll have to get Mickey, Fu Mickey Theo out of the way because he's hunting John down. No, so for me, fights I'd like to see this year. Craig Richards, Joshua Barsi. Let's get that done. Yeah, I think that's a good fight. I want to see Joshua Barsi in a fight. In yeah, a fight I think somebody with a heartbeat because he looks yeah. like he struggled in that last fight, didn't he? Yeah, so I'd like to see that because you know that's that's the that's the battle for Southeast London essentially. Like that belt may never leave Southeast London because one of them's got to fight Dan Aziz at some point. So that may never leave Southeast London. You're a big Dan Aziz fan, aren't you? You and Martin. Yeah, Dan. It's like I said before, Russ. When you work with someone, you have a different level of respect for what they can do because you can feel it. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I know how hard Dan hits. I know how hard Craig hits. I haven't done anything with Josh Boatsy, which is a shame, but I know how hard guys like Denzel hit. So I'm like, ooh, if they can just tie it all together with a bit of boxing intelligence, you know, it's like you know, like when you're talking about Crawford Ashley, you know, there are certain people who are just designed to punch. And I think at 175 in this country, we've got a lot of guys like that. So long may that continue. Mm. Okay. So I'd like to see that fight. What else would I like to see? Well, that's one. Right. That's one. So that, oh, that will be Richard's. 
Richard, Richards versus Boatsy. Versus Boatsy. It's Craig Richards, that, isn't it? Yeah. Craig yeah. Richards versus Boatsy, that's one. What's your second one you want to see, Terry? Joe Joyce v. Dillian White. Joyce, you know, Dillian, he never calls Joyce out, do he? And Joyce is older than him. No one does. No one ever calls out. He Joe could be Joyce. best starred at a lot of them, couldn't he, in this current British heavyweight scene? Yeah, his his style, he, everything he's got is all wrong for these guys. Engine, strength, power. Jab, chin. ramrod, jab, man, piston type, yeah. ramrod, jab. Thud, 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 isn't it? All the time. So yeah, you want to see rough, Joyce tough and rugged. Dylan White? Dylan White, grow a pair of balls and call Joe Joyce out. Instead of calling out Ortiz. People like Ortiz, it was 40 odd. Dylan's in the, that'll be Dylan's is it six guy over 40? Oof. He's bought a lot of old men, hasn't he? Malcolm Tran, Brown, Povetkin, Wack. There's another one. And, and if he fights uh, Ortiz, that'll be six, won't it? Fighting yeah. old men. I don't know. Uh, so who's your third one then? Um, Obviously Joshua Fury. I've my interest is that's kind of lower down the list. Lyndon Arthur. Yeah. Put him in with Callum Johnson. Yeah, I think that's a good fight, that. Yeah, I think Lyndon stands a good chance in that fight. A battle of uh, Manchester trainers, Joe G against Pat Barrett. Yeah. I'm all over that. That's, I, I think that's another good fight. All right, and what's your fourth fight, Terry? You'd like Sonny to... Edwards, Cal Yafai. Sonny versus Cal Yafai. What's happened to Cal Yafai? He read his, he read his best mate one other week. Well, like my fighters, are like my family, Coogan. <laughs> what's happened to Cal Yafai? What about Gal Yafai? He was sent to Coventry as well, wasn't he? Uh, that's yeah. four. What's your fifth one? What about a female one you want to see? Arpa Savannah Jones. Marshall, Clarissa Shields. Savannah, Sav versus Shields. Right, what about your six? We'll do ten. Warrington v. Dogbo. Warrington v. Dogbo. I'm sure uh, Sean O'Hagan and Nick Manners will be up for that fight. They just need to get Josh Warrington out, don't they? I mean, what's happened to Josh? He's like parked up, isn't he? Too expensive. Yeah, he sells tickets, but we can't get fans in, can we? What about his seventh one? Ah, uh, right. It's just, are we just doing British, or do you want to look outside of that? Any, anything, as long as it's a British guy in the fight. You know, it's somewhat, okay. you know. Billy Joe. Uh, I want to see Billy Joe for sure. Eubank rematch. No, I think Billy. I think Billy really outclasses him this time. Um, maybe Ryder. Billy if, if Smith moves to one seven five, Billy Joe Ryder. What next for Eubank? Uh, probably a fight with Dennis Duglin in the states, and then they might give him to one of the bigger names like a Caleb Plant. Dennis Duglin is garbage. <laughs> You're calling me there, Terry, aren't you? you got to be. No, no, Eubank will fight Dennis Duglin. I can see that because he needs a tick over, right? Because he hasn't really fought in ages. So he needs someone he can, he, I mean, look good against. And then they'll put him in with someone like a Caleb Plant. Or if he goes to 160, I can see him fighting a Charlo. So for your eight fight, we could put Eubank against Plant? No, no. Well, and I didn't say that. You asked me what's next for Eubank. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then. So what, what would you, what's your eight fight then, Terry? Yui Fury against somebody? Cool, but who would you put Huey in with? I'd like to see him in with Dylan White because they've sparred and I've heard some stories that Dylan White couldn't get near him. They were a couple of years ago though now, but... Really... Yeah, but am I going to enjoy watching that fight though is the question. I don't know if I am. Oh. So you might have to put Huey in with like a Michael Hunter. That's a good fight, that. Huey against... Yeah. Because everybody said he beat Povetkin, and that sort of correct the Povetkin loss for Yui, wouldn't it? Yeah, so I think that that's that's fair. And then, 
What about uh, your ninth fight, Terry? Fight that you would like to see next year? Mm. Chris Congo, Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly's not having much luck fighting East. He's even Eastian, is he? Mate, do you remember that fight was meant to happen when we went out for Den Stag, dude? Yeah, yeah. It's been cancelled, is it, three times now? Yeah. How long ago was that, that we went out for Den Stag? Dennis Scott, Dennis Stag, do. Dennis Scott married, didn't he, 2019, didn't he? January 4th, I think, was it? I got arrested on plane, then I on second. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if you remember... That that Friday, Stag we went do, well, December, wasn't it? December, Stag do, wasn't it? Yeah, that, and that was when he was meant to fight. That was when hours. That, yeah, that was when it was meant to. He was meant to fight Abinessi in the day after. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, and he got didn't. Uh, even, uh, not even easy. And Josh Kelly have a stomach bug, something like. He, that. Well, he 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 mysteriously fell ill, even though. Adam Booth was able to go to Caldwell's gym for a training session on Saturday morning. Worry. Yeah. Remember, because I was meant to go to that as well, but mate, after the night we had, I couldn't make it up in time. Mm. So you want to see Josh Kelly against Congo? Chris Congo. That's a good fight. He's, he's a good fight, though, Josh Kelly. Anyway, we can't say he ain't, can we? He's talented, but I don't know if we've we haven't really seen the 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 whole thing come together yet. What about Lewis Ritson? Nobody seems to mention him no more. He's only got one defeat on his record, split decision, and he's world ranked. Nobody mentions his name. Ah, he's well, What's the point, man? He's he just nah, not for me. He's not my cup of tea. I think that's a bit harsh, actually, because he's a massive freakish puncher and he's a nice kid. And I like his trainer. He's a proper like us. He's old school, his trainer, and his manager, Phil Jeffries. I just don't think Lewis Ritson and them guys up, uh, sorry, the people up north, the boxers up north, get much respect. You know, like uh, Savannah Marshall, and they seem to go on at radar because they're not down south, do you think? Uh, no, because you remember when Ritson was icing people, like he was getting the shine. And then when people realize he's not as good as those initial wins suggested, then I think you just call your interest naturally and go, nah, he's just British level, which is fine. Wow. Um, Savannah Marshall, let's be honest, there's only one fight for Savannah Marshall right now, and it's Clarissa Shields. That fight either gets made or we just don't care about anything else. And it's, it's harsh, but that's what happens when you're as good as Savannah Marshall is. Like, we only want to see you against the creme de la creme. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Then what about your 10th fight that you'd like to see this year? Oh, man. Um, fighter. I can't believe cool. you don't mention Beefy Smith against uh, Liam Williams at 160 Trilogy. No, nah, no, I have no interest in that. No? No, um, a fight that would get me excited. Jonas Harper 2? Isaac Chamberlain has to be on this list. Isaac Chamberlain, and you can have either Billum Smith or you can have Jack Massey. I'd like to see those fights this year. Billum Smith. Billum Smith. Uh, all right, then let's finish off on who's your fighter of the year from the UK? Mm. It's, e it's just too easy to give it to Fury, so I don't know if I want to do that. No, they fought once. I know. Uh, shit, who's fought more than once this year? Cheeseman. Did that, didn't he only fight Eggington? Oh, he only fight Eggington. A lot of them, a lot have just fought once, then, haven't they? Eggington's fought twice. Oh, is he? Eggington. What about... Yeah, fought... uh, oh, yeah, they fought on an Ennis show, didn't they? Yeah. What about... Lyndon Arthur or Joe Joyce? Probably I'm, Joe Joyce. Joe I'll, Joyce. I'd have to give it to Joe. Yeah. Okay, then. What about trainer of the year? Pat Barrett. 
Pat Barrett for me, trainer at year. Uh, who is it? Who, who even trains Joe Joyce now? Um, my mate Steve Broughton trains them. Right. Helped by Ishmael Salas. So we've got Pat Barrett, trainer up year. Joe Joyce, fighter at year. Who we got for promoter at year? Old Big Mouth Edward. No, Frank. Frank, Frank put his guys in harm's way. Yeah, for putting Dubois and Joyce together and Yard and Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, he put his guys in harm's way. He rolled the dice, didn't he, Frank, this year? Yeah, Where's which that? is good. We, as fans, that's what we want to see. Eddie played it safe, didn't he, with accountant by name, accountant by nature. Ring there you go. Uh, what about manager of the year? Board registered manager, not a Dean White, Sam Jones uh, manager. They are consultants, hashtag advisors, not managers. But what about manager at year? Um, Gallagher for basically rebuilding Natasha Jonas. Joe Gallagher, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, look, do you think, right? I've almost forgotten that Natasha Jonas lost to Terry Harper in my head. I think she beat Terry Harper. I that's th that's right. the sort of buzz that she's had this year that you just you just want to see more of her. And even my friends in the states want to know more about Natasha Jonas now. Yeah, she, she fought out in a skin southpaw, big puncher, and she was robbed, wasn't she? Yeah. So I just want to finish off then, Terry, on drugs in boxing. For example, are we ever going to see Dylan White's B sample? Because is, is it about 544 days or something now? We've still not had the B sample. Drugs in. Look, <laughs> um, mate, I already said I've, I've spoken about this for so long in the last 12 months. So I'll try and keep it really brief. Dillian's B sample was already tested, right? They just never mentioned it. The B sample was tested. The only reason you can be under any UCAD process is if your A and your B sample come back positive, right? You can't do anything else. You can't get lawyers involved. It's, it's, like, it's like me accusing someone of murder, but you haven't killed the person yet. Do you see what I mean, Russ? Yeah. You have to have done the offence, and the offence is your A sample and your B sample come back positive. Otherwise, you don't need to get lawyers involved. Mm. So the B sample was tested. It came back positive. They, they just spun it, and boxing fans fell for it. Because you can aren't allowed to talk. So they can't say, well, actually, the B sample did come back positive. But it did. Yeah. So what do you think about the drug situation in boxing? And moving forward, how can we make it better? I mean, Tony Bell, you was coming out calling for people to be stoned and banned for life. But when it's people who he knows, it, it, he always says they're innocent. So we can't go on anything that... I, I, I genuinely think if you fail for a performance-enhancing drug, which is separate from recreational, I think recreational should be a different process. If you fail for a performance-enhancing drug, you should be banned immediately. Yeah. No excuses, no nothing. And yes, before people start asking questions, that means we'd never see Fury fight Wilder. Fair enough. To keep the sport clean, it's worth it. Yeah. It'd be the same for Billy Joe. It'd be the same for everyone. If you started banning the top guys for life, sends a message. Boxing, yeah. That's what I'd do. I'd just ban them for life. What we need is somebody who's going to retire, who's had enough of boxing. And we need them to make a story up like that they failed the dope test and them to come out and then be banned for life, even though they're going to be retiring anyway. And that would send a message, wouldn't it? Something like that needs to happen, doesn't it, to get that message across that drugs mm -hmm. are folks and that boozers are cruisers. No, you need to ban someone at the peak of their powers. Just ban them. Mm. Like a Joshua. Well, no, but we, we have a real life example. The Fury brothers failed the test. I'd abandon them for life. Cousins, Fury cousins. Oh, sorry, cousins. But you would abandon them for life. You, and that's not anything personal. Band, Pardon? You we never even got a ban. None of them really got a ban. They're almost like they served their shadow ban. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, that it's right what's gone on, like Liam Cameron getting four year and Tyson Fury getting a two year ban for three offences. 
Liam had one offence and it were recreational cocaine. He got a four year ban. I mean, do you see where I'm coming from? I like how you carefully pick your furies, though. I like that. Why? How do you mean? They're both guilty. They both failed. Yeah. They both failed for Nandrolo. You never seen anything though in papers or anything about Yui's thing. Though. There's never anything mentioned. There's uh, Tyson's is all the time, isn't it? Because yeah, it's newsworthy. It's just Russ. The challenge you have is it's so easy to get the stuff now, and the testing is so lax. And remember, I told you, look, easiest way for a boxer not to get tested, just don't have a license. Yeah. And then just get a license when you've done your cycle. Yeah, get your license. Yeah. Or just go and fight abroad, get a temporary license over there. Get an Irish one. Mm. Yeah. All right then. Uh we'll 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 f- we'll finish off on one of my favorite subjects. Bias in boxing from Matchroom pundits, Bellew, Barker, Bean, Nelson, Macklin, the famous five. Throw Dave Colwell into the mix as well, because he's sort of inserted himself into the mix with them. What is going on with these people and why are they pushing rubbish out like that? Chisora beat Usek. What were all that about and, and what's been going on since and around that? Do you feel it's now out of control and that they need to have a clean slate with Sky and have no pundits in? What do you think? No, I think people, they love the gravy train, Russ. So they always want to show the paymasters that they're the most loyal soldiers. So they just go over the top. It's a game of one-upmanship, isn't it? Johnny Nelson goes, I think so-and-so deserves to win, and then everyone just buys into that story because they don't want Johnny to become the golden boy. So everyone has their role. And they just play that little game. I think if you change the cast, you get the same outcome. They'd all get there eventually. That's the challenge I have. You don't at the beginning, like Macklin and Bellew, when they came on the scene, they weren't like that. But after a few, after they got comfy, they, 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 they just pulled the tongues out, didn't they, and stuck them up people's rear ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you remember when they used to just get Macklin, right? Macklin would just be watching the fight. And they get Macklin to to give his opinion and you're like oh he's all right look at him he's calling it like he sees it i thought he were i thought tony bell you were i I thought dave caldwell were when he first started i thought they were all really brilliant and really polished and on cue and some somewhere along the line they they ended up uh somewhere along the line they just ended up losing the shit (laughs) but also i think the challenge is russ yeah it's hard to sound fresh after three or four years. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just hard to sound fresh. We almost just get bored of the sound of their voice. Yeah. You know, and like when I watched that the zone coverage over the weekend, it made me miss those guys at Sky because I was like, at least the Sky machine is well oiled. This the zone thing is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, what did you think to Gareth? A Davis uh, in his Del Boy chain and Ricky Atten, who looked like he was sloshed. What do you think to them as the new, the, uh, the, the, the Dazone men? <laughs> has Ricky got a role there because his son signed with Eddie? I don't know what, what, uh, what... I, I'm not, I'm not a Hatton fan, never have been. I, I just, as a character, as a personality, he's not my cup of tea. No, he's not. So, my, no, what. Yeah, watching him on TV, he doesn't really tell me anything I couldn't figure out for myself. So I'm like, well, you've just got Ricky Hatton there to get viewers in. I, I don't even think that works. Yeah, I uh, I don't know, but I, I thought there were a lot of rimming going on from Gareth A. Davis, not so much from, from Ricky, but I thought Gareth A. Davis' scorecards score were shocking, but... The rimming that were going on is it's out of control, mate. It's like these people yeah. are so pride. But, but, but you're asking a journalist to score a fight. Why would you even do that? Well, why would you ask uh, Dave Allen to be a Sky pundit and give his opinion when, because he was on Sky the other day, wasn't he talking about boxing on New Year's Day because they couldn't get anybody to go in, could they? <laughs> But why? Why would Dave? Why would Dave be asked when he he came out a few weeks ago and he said, "Look, 
I'm retiring because I didn't really ever train. I never took it seriously. So how can Sky have him on an expert analysis from Dave Co- from Dave Allen? I mean, Dave's a funny guy in that, but he can't be an expert if he failed as a fighter and he jacked in with as being a trainer. So he don't well, want okay. to be a fighter. He well, don't want to be a trainer. Well, my question becomes: Did he really fail as a fighter, or did he just maximize what he had? Well, he, he hasn't won a belt, has he? Look, we, we, I like to talk belts, me. I don't. It's no good somebody telling me I'm a boxer, I'm a good boxer, I'm on Sky, I'm an a, expert analysis, when he's got a snake belt holding his shorts up instead of a British title or a Commonwealth or even an area belt. He's not even got an area belt. But yet, Sky have him in as expert analysis. I have a problem with that when he's been going around saying he doesn't train. I never trained and never took it serious. It was all just a bit of a laugh, a bit of a babble in the bubble. I want to see people not waste the talents and things like that. But don't tell me he's an expert analysis guy when he can't be, can he? How can he be? I thought he, I thought he, was, he was an expert in Eurosport, though. I thought he came across really, really good. But it wasn't hard to commentate on that show, were it? Or give an opinion on it when you've got Glenn next to you. I thought he came across well, but at the end of the day, how can he be an expert when he's that he didn't train? You tell me, what do fans think to that? Is Dave Allen an expert pundit when he never trained? So how can he get advice out? So I don't know. I'm just curious what you think about that. Yeah, look, I, I've just accepted, you know what? All those guys in boxing want those jobs, don't they? They all want to be there when yeah. the camera's on, get a few quid for their opinion, you know? Like, the ego never goes away, no matter how old you get or how rubbish you get, that ego never goes away. Why does Robbie I, Reed and Carl Zaggy turn pundit gigs down, then? Because they're, just, they're disillusioned which sport. I know Robin is. I, I just don't think they can toe the line. I think they just want to say what they want to say. I mean, Clinton Woods won't work on Sky again because they, they want you to... He's there to give his expert analysis on the light heavyweight fights, and oh, you can't say that, Clint. It's why you've got me here to give an analysis, aren't you? So that's Clinton Woods done. Same with Robin Reed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, and I, I, I don't know about the Carl Zaggy situation because I don't know him personally. But are, are these TV companies telling these people what they can say and not say? Is that going on so. behind the scenes? I know. I, I think. I think that's why they have production meetings. I think. You know, you're told the high level messages. You're told you gotta, you gotta start, you know, building up fight number X, which is coming next or whatever. I'd like to see guys like Ryan Rhodes, you know, like guys who really delivered for Sky. Jamie I'd like Moore. To see someone like... Jamie Moore. Nah, less. Nah, not him so much. Why not? He's he's been on good Sky fights. Nah, but he he's had his chance. You see what I mean? He's been a pundit on Sky, and he didn't set the world alight. Now you said it before us, right? Didn't you say get some new faces in? Yeah, get some new faces in. Ryan's been on Sky before. He's had odd gig and that, but he hasn't been a regular like the rest of them, has he? They've only ever, only ever for like Sheffield fights, they sort of get Ryan Rhodes out. Like, oh, hey, go on, Ryan, pop out. I'd like to see him actually come out a bit more. Don Charles, get Don Charles to do something. I'd like, like to Don come on, but he wouldn't tow the company line, would he, Don? None of these guys would. They'd say, look, Peter I'm here Fury to give Fury wouldn't opinion. tell the company line, would he? Oh, man. Imagine Peter Fury on commentary. I know. It might be unbelievable, uh, wouldn't it? I'll, that's what I want. I want Peter Fury on commentary. We want Peter Fury and Yui. And <laughs> and Can you imagine that? Yui sat there, wouldn't say a word. And Peter <laughs> said, look at that bloke. They shouldn't be in him with him. He's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> But it'd be good. You could, you could have Savannah and Yui sat there, Peter in the middle, and Peter saying, "Are you two going to say anything?" <laughs> <laughs> I saw what said to Peter in his year. So Peter been sat in here three hours with Bunny. They've not said no to them two. Are they all right? Have they got a problem with it? Have they? Says they don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> they just train and sit sit there on the phones after waiting for the next session. There's very quiet kids, but. Very, very, very hard trainers. Very, you is a really hard trainer, you and Savannah. They love it. So, right, then we'll wrap it up, Teddy. We've just done an hour and a half nearly around about that. Let's have a look, yeah. So, we've had a good run today. Uh, I hope you're well. 
I think we've righted or wronged the world or whatever. If anybody's offended by what we've said today, don't take it to heart. Come see me. (laughs) Come see me. But don't be insecure. Understand that it's people giving an opinion and we're not fritting or bothered about anybody. We'll say what we want to say. We're not going to be like your cold wells who are going to hang out the back of people. Isn't that right, Dave? Come see me. I'll put you on my key ring. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's not even that look everyone's got the opportunity to get a camera get a microphone yeah. and a YouTube account and put their stuff out yeah and put up with stuff some of the stuff I have to put up with <laughs> yeah mate. hey Terry can, pick- I, uh, can I just point out that 74 email uh, answers for the guy who beat Frotch you know Andre Gugeloff you know in Ireland 2001 world championships yeah and 70-odd 70, 70 people entered it, and one person won it. But can I just say, when we do the next one next week, uh, the winner, you have to log you log in to the low-cost account. The, uh, low-cost. Uh, low-cost account, and that's all you've got to do, log into the account, and then I'll send you your trainers. All right? But you have to log in and send me proof that you've logged in, because low-cost want people looking online at the stuff, don't they? That's how it works. It's, not, it's two minutes to set the account up, but... There's always a catch, isn't there? But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's 74 people, which I thought were brilliant, isn't it? Hey, <laughs> Everybody wants to of, win some, don't they? Mate, it's a sign of growth, man. Like, fair play. Yeah, I'm, I'm off to see somebody now about a design for a billboard. John Fury, Mickey Theo, billboard going up. What do you think to that? Or are you going to put it in the same place you put the Eddie Hearn one up? No, no, we're not going to put it up there because the, the first one they tore down, didn't they? The Chef United fans. No, this one will have to go up in, in Manchester, won't it? Or <laughs> probably Manchester because we're coming for John Fury. John, you've got to turn around to Mickey Theo and tell him, I don't want to fight you. I'm too busy with BT Sport. Or you've got to say, let's get it on and turn up because you can't go around calling up, calling people out, John. and doing manoeuvres behind the scenes and then not uh, backing it up. So get ready for a billboard in Manchester. We're just, we've got the design ready. We're just going to look at some places. You know, like the other billboards that we had put up. But we're going to yeah. look for a good place near John's. So every time he drives by it for that 28-day period, he's going to see that and everybody's going to say, John, look at that billboard there. What are you doing? Are you going to fight this guy and shut him up for once and grow a pair? But uh, it is what it isn't. So, right. Thanks for coming on, Terry. You've been no a worries, good mate. guest. Have a great day, and I'll speak to you soon. You will do, mate. Don't have nightmares. Don't you have nightmares. Peace out. All right. Take care, mate. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me, porkycorner at mail.com. All right. Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Keep on trucking. <laughs>